welcome back to .md. My name is Michael and I'm an incoming MD PhD student at UPenn. Today's gonna be a little bit of a different type of video than my usual content. So I think a lot of the content that I've been putting out um, has been really focused on some of my recent achievements and things that I'm very proud of. But in a way, I feel like a lot of these give a false impression on, you know, kind of my actual journey through undergrad and the path that I had to take in order to get to where I am today. So for today's video, I really want to take the time to um, kind of just be really transparent with you guys and give you a sense on um, what were some of the failures that I experienced over the past four years and what were the things that I wasn't really proud of just so you can get a better glimpse into what goes on ultimately into like the resume building process, for instance. Honestly, I, I kind of expect this video to be mostly kind of like a rant. So um, I'll try to stay as organized as possible, but very likely I'm gonna go on tangents randomly and stuff like that. Okay, so number one is definitely research. Um, a lot of things that came up during research. So for those of you who don't know, I started research very early on during the last two years of high school. And I did research during junior and senior year um, of high school and also throughout all four years of undergrad. By the time I actually applied to medical school, I had upwards of five plus years of research experience under my belt and I had no publications at the time. And that was something that I was very embarrassed about when I was applying. I know that most MD PhD applicants actually do not have any publications at the time of publishing, but usually a lot of applicants, they switch between different labs. They're still trying to find out what they're actually interested in research wise. Um, I was in a single lab for two years during high school and then a single lab for four years of my undergrad and I wasn't able to get any um, kind of publications out from my wet lab experience. It was very difficult for me to comprehend why that was and at, at the time I just felt like it was a very painstaking process. I poured in so much of my energy and time and effort into the research process and I didn't, I felt like I didn't really get um, what I wanted to out of it. So that was something I, you know, honestly wasn't very proud of and I felt like I was falling behind many of my peers um, at Caltech. I felt like an incompetent researcher. Um, also applied, I think, to like a couple of grants during my freshman and sophomore year, got rejected from those. Also during high school, I think my, so when I was applying to college, the PI of the lab that I was working in actually refused to, let, to write me a letter of recommendation. Basically he said he didn't feel like he knew me well enough. Um, and so my postdoc that I was working with closely actually in the lab agreed to write a letter of recommendation for me. Um, but you know, that kind of stung as well. There's also this research uh, speaking competition at Caltech that was just internally for Caltech students. Um, and I qualified for the semifinals, I think, um, during my freshman year, like breezed through pretty easily. Um, and then sophomore year, I didn't even make the qualifying cut. Um, so that kind of sucked. Junior and senior year, I think my performance in lab wasn't really great. So um, definitely my physics coursework and you know general like academic workload um, really picked up during my last two years of undergrad. And so I think my research kind of suffered as a result. Sometimes I would forget to come into lab or I forgot an experiment was running um, or just make a silly mistake. And I'm pretty sure my like uh, graduate mentor and my PI probably got a little bit pissed. I also, you know, eventually I, I kind of stopped going to lab meetings because some I just didn't have enough time. I was just so exhausted all the time. And so I felt like I wasn't as involved in like lab activities as much, um, which I definitely wasn't proud of. But yeah, that's a lot about my research. Um, I also wanted to talk about academics. On paper, it looked like I did very well because, you know, I got straight A's during my undergrad and also during high school. Um, did really well in the MCAT. I can't really complain about that. But the process in which I, you know, kind of got those grades and, you know, did very well academically certainly did not come easily. The most notable thing I remember was during my freshman year. So for some context, the first two out of three quarters for Caltech freshmen are pass fail. So completely like no grades given whatsoever, no shadow grades or anything. It's just to help freshmen get kind of adjusted with the um, Caltech course load. And I remember coming into my freshman year at Caltech, 
Um, basically, at the end of first quarter, I barely passed freshman physics. So I think my end grade was like a 52 or 53 percent, and I think the cutoff was like a 50 percent or something. So um, I legitimately almost failed freshman physics, um, which was really concerning for me because in high school, I actually never took like a, I didn't take AP physics, I didn't take honors physics or anything. Um, I think I took like an online course or something, but um, I just felt very behind. Um, I was kind of struggling with imposter syndrome um, initially because I got recruited to Caltech for swimming. And so I didn't, I wasn't really sure if I belonged at Caltech academically, but you know, ultimately I think I kind of worked things out. I started to, um, you know, during my winter term, I, I did a little bit better. And then by the time uh, spring term rolled around my freshman year where we that was the first time that we actually were on grades um, I kind of got my stuff together and like actually did well in my physics courses So um, I'll probably make another video about this But truly I think anyone can do physics and I think my story kind of speaks a little bit about that Yeah, I also got rejected from a TA position. I applied for during um, the first term of my sophomore year which really sucked because I knew that that course was already low on TAs and apparently they just really didn't want me. I applied for a fellowship, uh, an academic fellowship during my sophomore year with, I think it was like, like there were there were seven open spots and somehow I found out that like eight people applied, eight total, including myself. And the number of students that actually get the fellowship actually varies year to year. So I know, for instance, although they say there's like seven on paper, um, there's like some years there's eight, for instance, they, they basically the number of slots is flexible. And it turned out that for my sophomore year, I was the only one that applied that did not get the fellowship. Literally all of the other seven applicants got it. I mean, I know it's kind of pretentious for me to say like, you know, I thought I deserved that fellowship, but I worked really hard on that application. Um, it just didn't really make sense to me why I was the only one. I never really figured out why that was the case. Um, didn't really reflect on that too much internally. And I think just a general sense during, especially my last three years of college, um, I didn't really fit in anywhere with physics majors or like pre-meds for instance. So um, again, I, I majored in physics or applied physics during college, um, but I was also pre-med at the same time. And so all of the other physics majors, they were all doing, you know, like, uh, uh, particle physics or like high energy stuff like that uh, you know like you're very traditional like um, physicist research and so as a result they would all work together on sets um, Caltech is a very collaborative um, school um, but I didn't really know any of them that well I didn't know any of their research interests and so um, that was a very exclusive community that I felt like I felt really shunned off from so that's against the rules and you can't sit with us at the same time, all the pre-meds, they were all taking, you know, anatomy together. They were taking very specific biology courses, like neuroscience, stuff like that, that I wasn't taking. So I didn't really feel a part of that community either. And so I just felt like I was in the middle somewhere in between, isolated from both of these places that I identified with academically, uh, which made it really difficult to do a lot of the sets because I basically had to figure things out on my own because I didn't really have anyone to collaborate with too much. There was also some time um, I remember during my sophomore year where I was still interested in medicine, but I also wanted to branch out and see if there were other um, career options for me as well. And so I got interested in potentially pursuing quantitative finance. So I applied to a bunch of internships, you know, really early on in the application cycle during my sophomore year, and I got rejected from basically all of them. Uh, so it's really difficult to get an internship during your sophomore year, but um, you know, I had like a couple of interviews. I thought they went well um, and I didn't get in anywhere. Okay, sorry, scratch that. I, I got into one place, but at the end, I, I kind of found out like, I, at least I was pretty sure that it was kind of like a scam internship because uh, I had to like pay money to like actually attend it. So I, that was kind of like out of the question. Um, I just felt like, you know, a lot of other sophomores at Caltech were getting internships at the time. Yeah, I didn't know why I, I couldn't, you know, perform well on their behavioral or the technical interviews. Uh, finally, I'm just going to talk about like some hodgepodge of all the other failures I can kind of think of during the past four years. We'll start with freshman year. So again, I, I got recruited to Caltech for swimming. And so I was on their varsity team, um, competed for division three, I guess, for NC2As. And I just did not perform well that entire season. Um, I swam a lot slower than I did in high school. Um, I think it, again, was related to the adjustment phase I had for freshman year. Did poorly in all my competitions. Um, did even worse during my championship meets because I just did not handle stress that well. Um, I remember my coach like really chewing me out um, 
about like three weeks before like our championship competition because I very stupidly decided to run a half marathon just for kicks um, three weeks before the championship meet and obviously he got really upset very justifiably so I also so I used to play the saxophone I applied for a jazz band during my freshman year got rejected basically I was just really bad at improv I couldn't like improvise solos and stuff like that and so when it came to that part of like the audition I just completely blanked so a lot of failures related to um, Atria Connect which was a kind of like a medical nonprofit organization that I helped co-found um, during my undergrad. I remember we were invited to apply to join a like a startup accelerator. Um, it was like nationally recognized and I thought that was really cool but when it came time to elevator pitch they were just simply not interested. Joining these types of accelerator programs is very difficult but um, the fact that they actually invited us to apply, um, I thought that was going to mean something meaningful. So I, I was kind of hurt personally when I you know, the elevator pitch didn't go as successfully as planned. I also had a pitch with a um, kind of like a small private donor, but he kind of gave us a lot of seed money as a donation. And so basically I had a renewal pitch where uh, we basically had to talk about what are the things that we accomplished over the past X number of months, what we envision moving forward and, and how we would use his money and donations, stuff like that. And we ultimately didn't get the renewal donation. So that also really sucked. He never really explained why, what issues he had with it, but I, you know, there's only so much I can do. And also this, this probably belongs in the academic category. I'm just realizing this. I decided that I want to kind of get interested and involved in computer science later than other students at Caltech. So I took my first CS course as a sophomore. And in general, I just really struggled with computer science during like the first couple of courses that I took. Um, I felt especially behind because I was in a class full of freshmen and a lot of them had already known computer science, you know, coming into college. And so I just really struggled. I had to camp out at office hours like a lot of the time. That first year was definitely very rough. Junior year. So <laughs> The thing for whatever reason that I remember the most is I had been ballroom dancing for like a couple of months at this point and I tried to do two ballroom competitions. Um, I placed last in both so you can kind of guess how bad I was at ballroom. Still a lot of fun, it was just kind of really discouraging. Also in junior year, I, I started taking on more leadership roles in a lot of the clubs at Caltech that I was a part of, and just no one would show up to our club meetings, like maybe like one or two people. And sometimes they were to like actual events that like I spent like a lot of time and effort um, with the rest of like the officers for the club, uh, which we spent a lot of hours actually preparing for them, but still no one showed up. And um, that always really sucked to see that like all of your efforts basically go to waste because no one's actually interested in the work that you're doing. I, I probably didn't catch all of them, but those are the things that really stuck with me over like the past like X number of years. Um, so you can see there's like a lot of them, you know, like a lot of things that didn't really go my way, especially really early on, I think. But um, ultimately, I think things started to get better and better as I kept persevering and kept, you know, kind of pushing, even though I, I was faced with like a lot of different rejections along the way. I also wanted to just talk about some of the takeaways I think I, I personally have given myself. I think the first thing is probably just do what you're interested in, just you do you. I think especially as a pre-med, there's a lot of like cookie cutter, like checkbox, you gotta do like shadowing, volunteering, all that stuff. Just do what you're interested in, like just kind of ride the flow and you don't feel pressure that you have to do what all the other pre-meds are doing. A really great example is that, you know, everyone thought that you, oh, you had to take psychology, you had to take neuroscience, all of these different very advanced biology courses. You had to major in bioengineering or biology at Caltech to be a pre-med. And that simply is just, it's not the case. Just do whatever you're interested in. Um, and ultimately things will start kind of paying off because you're doing work that you're legitimately interested in. Another thing is just, you know, like try new things, I think. Um, so. The reason why there, I think there were so many failures that I kind of experienced over four years was that I tried to apply for things. I tried, you know, branching out to new things such as finance, for instance. I tried applying to grants. I tried participating in different competitions. And because of that, I put myself out there and most of the time I actually did get rejected, but sometimes it actually did turn into something, you know, really special and really meaningful for me down the road. 
So I think a lot of people sometimes get like paralyzed in fear. They kind of think let's weigh like the pros, the cons, and through all of that really tough and difficult uh, decision making process, they ultimately just end up doing nothing. I'm not saying like just kind of rush in blind, but there is just like a leap of faith that you have to make in order to see anything substantial down the road. And I think, you know, kind of through all of this and through experiencing so many things, putting myself out there, I've really learned like don't take these types of failures personally. You just gotta keep moving on to the next thing. You know, there's always something greater down the road and all of these incremental milestones are just stepping stones that you need to take in order to get to whatever your final destination is. And there's always multiple paths that you can take. So even though if like one path seems like suddenly become unavailable for you because of you know some recent failure in your life, it's always a good learning opportunity and a chance for you to pursue something else that might even lead to something greater. I think that's a good stopping point for the video. Hopefully that gives you again, a little bit of insight into kind of my different experiences along my academic journey over the past four or five years. If you have any additional like lingering questions or anything about the things that I've talked about, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Also make sure to like and subscribe this video. It really helps out the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.